Hi guys, it's Hanzo here, and welcome to my ultimate guide in doing stuff inside your teapot. Let's start with clipping technique. I want to show you a simple yet effective trick on clipping furniture. This is most likely going to be used in most of my tutorials, so it's a must. First off, place any furniture down and then place the furniture that you want to be clipped anywhere. The trick here is moving the furniture you want to be clipped back and forth to any furniture. You will notice the blue and red box, which you already know the meaning of. Blue box means you can place it down, while red box means you can't. The trick here is what I call shake it until you make it, which just means shake the furniture back and forth until it turns blue. Once it turns blue, you can now place it down to wherever you want, with a few set of restrictions though, which I'll explain in the latter part. Now let's try clipping some foliage to the boulder. It's easy once you get used to doing it. This is just an example, so try it yourself inside your teapot. Now speaking of restrictions, you cannot clip a furniture near your mansion, an animal, or a companion in your teapot. So, how do we clip it in the new ass? simple. We attach them to a platform which either is a boulder or flooring. Once the furniture is on top of a platform, it will inherit the properties of where it is standing on. This is like a parent-child system where the child acts like a part of the parent which then ignores the properties of itself. In this example, the boar which will be the child cannot be clipped to any furniture. Notice that I can't put a roof above the boar, which is a bummer. But if you put it in a platform which will be its parent, it will inherit its size and type. And we can apply the shake it until you make it method. So watch this. I added a wall to cover up the housing of the boar to make it more private. Notice that the boar and the wooden wall is on top of the floor and not the roof itself so we can clip them inside. But what if we don't want a floor? Well, we can also use the boulder to apply the same method. Watch this. Now that you know the basics of clipping, let's move on to floating method. I will show you all the type of boulders you can float your furnitures on, but again the restrictions I mentioned earlier still apply so you still can not float your mansion an animal or a companion. But of course we can apply the trick of the parent-child system to trick the system to make it float. This floating boulders have different type of height, meaning the smaller one called floating precipice can go as low as 2.5. Subspace boulder solitude can go as low as 2.8. Subspace builder seat of mist can go as low as 4.8. And sky range can go as low as 5.3. Just a reminder to think carefully on which boulder you want to use in floating your furniture. Here's a tip before you float a furniture. Look at the background where you're facing your camera on. It's easier to float a furniture facing an empty space background rather than facing a mountainous land that may mistakenly place the furniture. Although, I'm not sure if it's the same on PC, but I'm telling you this as a mobile user. Now to float a furniture, just zoom into your camera until you cannot see the rotation bar anymore. Or perhaps the rotation bar is above the box where your furniture is standing on. Tap the furniture once and you'll see it turns red and then turns back to blue, which indicates that the furniture is now floating. Another tip is the camera view does need to show the furniture as long as you can see it blink with the commands on the right side. You're good to go. Next I will show you how to float a house larger than the actual boulder. So each furniture has a center mass, so as long as the center mass stays in the boulder you can make it float. Notice that when I put the house above the boulder and it's showing a red box which means you cannot place it there, but if you look for its center mass and try zooming in using the floating method it will magically turns blue once you tap it. A famous friend of mine named Tico Lede once said it could be red it could be blue. Just try floating it in the boulder and see for yourself. Once it is floating, you can tap to it and you can rotate it to wherever direction you want it to be facing if you needed that adjustment. But once you move it, it will remove the floating status and it will be placed in the ground, so be careful not to move the floating furniture. Now let's combine clipping and floating together to make a design. Let's use the floating precipice here to make the new one float in front of the house. The trick here is you need to do the shake it until you make it method first before moving it above the boulder and try to float it.
And there you have it. You just learned how to clip and to float furnitures for your teapot. But moving on. This time let's go back to the parent-child method here. Let's try to make the mansion the child and the platform the parent so that we can keep on dreaming that the mansion is actually the bigger one that Mihoyo failed to give us. Why Mihoyo? I used around 12 platforms called Path of Cultivation to fit the little mansion Mihoyo gave us. Once you can put above the platform, try removing one by one until you get the piece where the mansion is attached to and clip it inside the bigger house by controlling the parent which is the platform. Moving on to how to make a stair, which is complicated at first but when you get the hang of it, it's like a walk in the park. Before that, I will show you the type of stairs you can use for your teapot. Some can be bought by a tubby in your teapot. Like different types of subspace boulders. And something like the meditation stone, which is cheaper. And some furniture needs to be crafted like stone and wooden benches. Or the foundation of stone floorings if you want a slower elevation. Now that you know some furnitures that you can use for stairs, let's start making one. In this part, I will use the meditation stones to create the stairs. To start, place the stone on a floating boulder. Then do the floating method in the stone. Then move the boulder downward just 0.5 from where it originally was. And place another stone moving forward then float it. Repeat the steps until you get to the lowest point of the boulder or you get your target numbers of steps. When your new stone keeps sticking to the same height as the last one, just toggle the snap furniture off to avoid experiencing this. You can try rotating the stones little by little as you go down making the steps if you wanted to have a curved stairs, like this. Now let's try walking up the stairs if it's actually functioning properly without jumping from the steps. Great, it seems like it is as smooth as butter like criminal undercover. Now let's make a stair using stone benches. The height differences between steps should be 0.3 to 0.4, unlike the previous one which is 0.5 to make it walkable. If you're going to make straight stairs downward, we can put all the steps we want beforehand to have a perfect alignment. To do this turn on the snap furniture toggle and place down the benches. When we reach the lowest point of height of the floating boulders, how do we continue to the stairs to reach the solid ground? The answer is using sets which is the hardest part of this tutorial, but I will explain as clear as I can to make it easy for you. First off, we put two bigger floating boulder together into a small one in front of it. The first two big boulder will act as the carrier for the unnecessary furnitures. Then, the middle small boulder will act as the attacher, which will be the boulder that we use on delivering it down the ground. And then, the last small boulder will act as the floater, which will be the device to use to float the furniture. So to recap, the carriers, the attacher, and the floater. Now let's go to the sets and select the bird and blossom set because it has two stone benches which is all we need in that particular set. Put the set down and separate the stone benches from the other furniture. Move the stone cup shaped pool in the middle of the set's area to make it as the marker. Just make sure that the marker is in the center area by viewing it in top view.
Then, move the benches just near the centered mark. Then select and move the set in the boulders we mentioned before. Notice that the marker is standing in the attacher boulder. This is crucial so we will know where the benches will be attached later on. Put one bench in the floater and make it float. And then, move the floater away to check if the bench floats. Notice that when I rotate the attacher, the bench is not yet attached to it. So to attach it, select the whole set and cancel it. Here's the best part, and watch the magic happens. It is now attached to the attacher. Now to detach the floating bench, just use the floating method, and then it will be detached to the attacher. The best part about this is you can now set the distance and the height of the attacher before attaching the floating bench. Finally, this way you can bury the bench to the solid ground. You can detach it and attach it whenever you like to reposition its distance and the height to the attacher. Let's try attaching the second bench using the same method. We can float it at the same height as the first one and adjust the height before attaching it. Remove the other furnitures from the carrier and repeat the method to attach new benches. Now I will show you the common mistakes the majority is doing. You see the marker is standing in the carrier boulder instead of the attacher. By doing so it will not attach to the attacher instead it will attach to the carrier. So what you're going to do is select the entire set, and then, move it until the marker is on the attacher. Now let's move the attacher in the far side to hide it before attaching the benches. This way the attacher will not be in the way of the stairs when connecting it to the other benches. And that's it, you now know how to use the sets to make your furniture float lower. 
check my channel out and watch my teeth what designs to have an idea on where you can apply these tricks. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you find my ultimate guide in your teapot very helpful. If you have more questions, leave a comment down below. Please do subscribe to my channel for more Genshin Impact contents in the future. See you till next time and keep safe. Again, my name is Hanzo, signing out, leaving you with a word, shake it, until you make it.